Now it's time to get the motherboard installed for this particular board. First thing we have to do is peel off this plastic cover right there. Now we're ready to just gently set it in place. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this episode of Newegg Now, I'm gonna be checking out the ASUS Pro R X570 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. I did purchase this product myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box and packaging right here. Check it out, everything looks Great, we can learn more about the motherboard on the back. This is an AMD board, it's 5000 series ready, features Wi-Fi 6E, it's Windows 11 ready, PCIe 4.0, which is really important to me for our M.2 drive so we can get some blazing fast speeds. And this features a 10 gig ethernet port as well as a 2.5 gig port. But for me, I needed to have a motherboard that had 10 gig built in as well as PCIe 4.0. 0.0 in this board fit the bill and since this is made for creators we have tons of usbs as well so i'm really really excited to start using this board now let's go ahead let's open it up and look at the contents here are all the contents first up you can see we have our technical information followed by our customer service and contact card next you can see we have our dvd with our drivers for the board then we have our user guide and manual. Pretty thick, walks you through everything you need to know about this board. Really helpful to reference before you build as well as during and even after. Then you can see we have our Wi-Fi antenna right here. A couple of data cables for us. We have our display port to display port cable for Thunderbolt 4. You can see we have our Q connector right here. Then we have some M.2 pieces for us. So we have some single sided sticky pads. You can see both of them included right here. And then we have an M.2 screw and mount. Last but not least, we have the motherboard itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Here's the board up close, check it out. You can see where the CPU is gonna go, our memory, USB type C right here. We have one USB 3.0 and three USB 2.0 options, three M.2 two drive mounts as well, all PCIe 4.0. Look at the really cool ProArt logo and branding sprinkled all throughout. I love the color scheme they have going on here with the shields and our heat sinks. Now let's look at it from the side. You can see all of our IO right here. So we have our audio, our BIOS flashback. You can see all of our USB ports and USB type C, Thunderbolt 4, and we have our display port in for Thunderbolt 4. 10 gig networking and 2.5 gig and you can see our wi-fi 6e antenna mounts right there now let's go ahead let's get this board installed so on our motherboard we have a couple of different parts and components to install we're going to install the cpu the cooler our ram and our m.2 drive first let's go ahead let's prep for our cooler so we're going to remove these two pieces right here and then we're going to take our four screws and those four black pieces and we're going to drop them in place and we're gonna install those with these brackets. So it's gonna go black spacer, this bracket, our screw down in on this side, and then same thing on the other side right here. Pay attention to how we have the bracket too with that bump up. It's not gonna be a valley, it's gonna be a mountain right there. And you can reference the user guide and manual with your cooler as well. But we're doing the AM4 option right here and it is labeled for us. So let's go ahead, let's get that removed and get these installed. So here you go, you can see what one side looks like right here again. You're just gonna take these two pieces, drop them in place, line up the metal bracket here and drop those two screws in. For the AM4 installation, you do not use the included washers, so you can just set those aside. Now you can see both brackets have been installed. Let's go ahead, let's put the CPU on. When installing the CPU, make sure you line up the gold triangle right here with the triangle on the corner of your socket. So we have this lever right here. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna open that up. Now we're ready to drop it in place. Again, match the triangle with the triangle right there. So we're gonna flip this around. And you can see we have the triangle on this side too. It's a little bit easier to see on the other side. And just gently drop it in place. So there we go. It just fits right in. And then you take this lever and then you snap it shut. Now we have successfully installed our CPU. So before going any further with the CPU cooler, I recommend getting your RAM installed. So here we go. We're gonna take our two sticks of RAM. We're gonna follow the indicator on the board. So for our first two sticks, we're gonna use A2 and B2. 
It's only gonna go one way, so make sure you have it lined up properly. And then just gently press in place. You should hear it snap. So there we go, just snapped in place. And now let's take our second stick. Same thing, line it up, only gonna fit one way. Gently press. There we go, just snapped in place. And now we have successfully installed our RAM. Also at this step, while we have the most room to work with, I'm gonna go ahead and install our M.2 drive in the first slot right here. So we have to remove this cover and we'll get it installed. Here's what it looks like with the cover removed. Check this out, this is really cool. So when we install our M.2 drive with this board, it's gonna snap right in. And then we have this little lever right here and it locks it in place, no screw needed. Now we're ready to put this cover back on, but be sure to remove this piece of film before you finish installation. The film has been removed. Go ahead, tighten it back down. There we go, we have successfully installed our M.2 drive. Now with everything else prepped, it's time to finish our cooler installation. I wanna point out again the really nice design with this cooler and how basically it's off center, giving us more space on this side and flexibility in the future if we want to upgrade our RAM. It's not gonna block anything. We'll still have room for our fan as well too. So in the future that maybe I do wanna come back here and put two extra sticks in. I don't have to remove the whole cooler. If anything, I'll just have to take the fan off. So I'm really a big fan of this design. So we're ready to take the included thermal paste. I'm just gonna give it a little press here on the CPU. It's gonna be about a pea size as you can see. We'll make sure to get all the rest of it out of there. Now we're ready to peel off this cover. Make sure you do that before use. And then you can see how we're gonna line it up with the Be Quiet logo and branding. We're gonna drop it right in place. And while we're doing that, we're also gonna have to come and take this bracket that you see right here with these two screws. That's gonna go like this in between. And we're gonna fasten it in place. So go ahead, you're gonna place this on and line everything up and then fasten it down. Side note, go ahead, place that screw on there first. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. Now just take turns tightening both screws. So you can see we drop our screwdriver in through the top right here. We can line it up and tighten down and then repeat that process right here and continue to work them both until they're nice and snug. So there we go, we have successfully installed the cooler. Now let's go ahead, let's get the fan installed. You may notice right here, I went ahead, I swapped out the included fan with a Be Quiet RGB fan. So this is their Light Wings fan. We got a nice RGB ring right here. I think this is gonna look really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and clip this one right on the side as you see here. Now you can see we have the fan clipped in place on both sides, very simple. You're gonna go ahead, you're just gonna thread that through the fan like you see right here. And then you just press this back until it's clipped into the sides of the cooler. So you can see how that works. Pretty easy, then you can kind of just pull this to get it loose again. And they do give us two additional clips, so if we wanted some more cooling on the other side, we could put another fan right here on the cooler. But there you go, we got the motherboard prepped and all set and ready to go. Now it's time to get the motherboard installed for this particular board. First thing we have to do is peel off this plastic cover right there. Now we're ready to just gently set it in place. So we have nine standoff brackets right here. Eight will have a threaded option for us for the eight included screws with our case. So just go ahead, gently set it in place. Line everything up just like so. And now take those eight included screws and tighten them down and fasten in place. So now you can see we have the motherboard successfully installed. So here you go, you can see the PC booted up. We have our BIOS screen loaded. Check out the beautiful RGB fans. And don't forget about the really cool RGB that we have on the front of the case. All right, so now you can see we're in the bio settings for our board right here. Check it out. This is the screen you're gonna be at and we're currently in easy mode. You can see at the top, we can change the day and time, English. We have our easy tuning wizard. I did use this and unfortunately it didn't work and I just got a black screen when it was all done. So I did have to um, use a screwdriver jumper and reset the CMOS battery and then those settings cleared and it worked again. So proceed at your own risk. If it doesn't work, then you can hopefully do what I did and you should be all set and ready to go. We have a search option and we have our um, LED RGB controls right here. And we can also resize the bar depending on your GPU. But you can learn more about the build. You can see our RAM right here, what we're getting, 3200 megahertz for our speeds. Here's our DOCP. You can choose to enable or disable that. 
So there's a lot of quick settings right at your fingertips. You can see our fans. So we have a couple different options there. And then here's our easy system tuning again, and we can change our boot priority. And then you can see we have our boot menu down here. Let's go ahead, just for fun, I'll show you the advanced menu. And now you can see what everything looks like. Here's our extreme tweaker, depending on what you want to overclock. So you can do all that right here. If your memory's not at the correct speed, you can adjust that right from within these settings as well. All right, we'll keep moving down. You can see a lot of different options. Proceed at your own risk. And then you can see here's our advanced settings. A lot of different options here. Configure NVMEs, AMD overclocking. Then we have our resource monitor right here. So temperature, fan speed, voltage, QFAN configuration. Then we have our boot settings. Then we have our tools. Here's the ASUS Easy Flash 3 utility. Armory crate. And then we can also exit and you can see we got our hardware monitoring again. So that's a quick look at the bio settings for this board. So overall, after completing the build, let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to this motherboard. Count me impressed. This is a great choice if you're looking for a motherboard and you're a content creator and you want 10 gig networking, you want PCIe 4.0, and you need multiple USB ports, you'll be really happy with this motherboard. Don't forget, I didn't even take advantage of the three USB 2.0 headers on this board. Now, with all of that said, there are still some things I would want to see improved and changed in the future. The biggest thing for me is that I feel like they miss an opportunity to put an additional USB 3.0 header on this board. I would rather have two less USB 2.0 headers and have an additional USB 3.0 header. Yes, they have USB Type-C, which is great for our front panel, but I really feel like they should have an additional USB 3.0 header on this board. Other than that, I want to point out that I'm not happy, and this could be a fault of my case more than the board itself, but that they have the header at a 90, that's what I'm calling it. So you're not plugging directly into it, you know, vertically, you have to access it horizontally. I feel like that's a pretty big miss. So if they want to give me one of each, that's fine. But in this case, with this particular case, see what I did there, um, it was very difficult to get it all connected properly. I'm happy with how it turned out, but it was a real pain with how the case was configured and where that is. That's just a hard connector anyway. So for me, I would love to see that change to a vertical header, whatever you want to call it there. Other than that, I would want to point out too that when I was setting this up in BIOS, it posted right away. It was working great. I decided to get fancy in the BIOS and use their easy configurator to basically tune this motherboard. And as soon as I did that, everything went black and it no longer worked. So I think it had some sort of memory issue. Now I was able to short it out, so to speak, with the CLRTC connectors down here. There's these two little pins, just turned everything off, took my screwdriver, held it there for five to 10 seconds, and then we booted it back up and it worked again. But just keep that in mind. If you try to use their tuning, you may encounter issues as well. So it's a nice feature to have, but in the real world, use case scenarios, at least with my build, it wasn't very helpful and we had issues. But overall, it's been up and running great. Very, very happy with this board. If you're a content creator, again, if you need 10 gig, you need multiple USB headers and a bunch of USB ports on the board itself. And I didn't mention Thunderbolt 4 and Wi-Fi 6E. There's a lot going for this board that's gonna make it last for years to come. So you have some great longevity and it will definitely meet any demands that you're gonna throw at it. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.